Welcome to Southern Nevada, more specifically the Red Rock area, or I guess officially Red Rock Canyon National Recreation Area. I think that's the title. This is just west of Las Vegas. Uh, these incredible high steep cliffs here that form the scenic western backdrop to the Las Vegas area. Uh, my name's Sean Wilsey, geology professor at the College of Southern Idaho. I'm here mostly recreating today, but we'll do some geology as well. I'm here with a buddy of mine. He's a little bit further up the trail, but we're going to work our way uh, in this video. We're going to do, a, I think it's a six or seven pitch climb up this buttress, um, and then we'll descend coming down off the, the left side here. So we're doing some rock climbing, uh, but also looking at the geology up close and personal of this unit here. This is the Jurassic aged Aztec sandstone. It's essentially the same sandstone you see at Zion National Park where it's called the Navajo sandstone. Uh, it's further east around Moab and Lake Powell. So it's an extensive geologic unit that formed in the Jurassic when this part of Western North America was a large sweeping sand dune complex. So we'll be able to see some cross bedding up there, some of the telltale signs of um, wind deposition in this sandstone unit. The more um, pronounced red unit just below the Aztec, I believe is the Cayenta Formation. At least that's what we call it in Southern Utah. It's probably the same name here. So this escarpment here forms this dramatic uh, set of cliffs uh, just west of Las Vegas. This is the Red Rock region, which is known for, in addition to its outstanding scenery, it's a world-class rock climbing destination. So this is called the Angel Food Wall. And I'm not sure which route we're gonna do yet. We're gonna go see uh, which route looks appealing and if there's other folks up there we need that we wanna um, find something less crowded. So I'll catch you next time from the base of the route. Okay, we have topped out on the first pitch, the route we decided to climb, it's called Group Therapy. So we started down there uh, by that tree, climbed up to here about 100, 70 feet up um, looking to the north here you can see the bedding of the sandstone dipping to the left or to the west here's the trail we came down and then hike back up the hill here um, so just give you a little perspective on things so with these types of trad climbs where we're climbing crack systems we have to place pieces of gear in the crack as we go there's no bolts on this wall no hardware attached to the wall and then once we get basically a full rope rope length up off the ground uh, we have to build an anchor and so what you'll see here is a couple of cams maybe i can move up a little bit and show you these a little bit better so there's a one cam in a crack uh, there's a second one back in here and then a third one down here so we've got a nice three-piece anchor and then it's all uh, equalized with this yellow piece of cord here. And so we're at the top of the first pitch. There's my buddy Darren. He's going to get ready to lead the second pitch. We thought we'd just give you a quick little taste of what it looks like up here. Uh, I'll just show you a couple things in the sandstone. So one of the best things about climbing at Red Rocks is this quartz rich, um, medium grained, uh, sandstone that was deposited in a sand dune environment has this dark desert varnish on it. So you can see these, these dark plates of rock that actually form these great handholds and footholds as you climb. They're also much harder than the sandstone, so you really can't rub any sand grains off when you rub these dark varnish plates, whereas if you rub the whiter parts of the sandstone, it's a little bit more grainy overall. Uh, and so this desert varnish, there's a little bit of a controversy about exactly how it forms. Um, it's a manganese oxide coating, and there's one group or camp of people that thinks it has a biologic origin, that the microbes actually precipitate some of the material that forms the desert varnish. And then there's also another group of folks that thinks it has nothing to do with, with organisms, but it's more of a, a water-produced weathering feature, so it's more abiotic. Uh, but nonetheless, it makes the climbing pretty fun and remarkable. Uh, you can see these dark plates across the way. There's another group of climbers up here climbing a different section. And then the other great thing in the rock is in places what we get are these rounded spherical 
um, concretions. These are iron concretions. Uh, in some places they're called Moki marbles. I did a video in St. George, Utah looking at these in the exact same formation. Uh, here's another large one right here. A little hard to see with the, the shadow, but uh, let me move that out a little bit. There you go. Big rounded, that one's maybe racquetball size, iron concretion. Uh, and these form when water, move, groundwater moves through this rock when it was buried and iron precipitates out in one spot but then starts to nucleate as more iron is deposited around it eventually makes these these rounded concretions and these are hard as well just like the desert varnish so they stick out from the wall and make nice little handholds and footholds so so we'll sign off for now we'll head up a couple more pitches and share some more of this climb with you here at red rocks in southern nevada all right, we've come to the top of pitch two where there's a group in front of us we're waiting on. Um, but this is pretty cool here in the sandstone. We've got all these just amazing red little um, iron concretions that aren't sticking out as much. Some of them are, like this one's a little bit more sticking out, but just really cool pattern. Almost looks like, yeah, a bad case of acne or the chicken pox or something running through the... The rock you can see this section here we're on which is more the white sandstone is less featured it's more of smooth what we call slab style climbing uh, and then as we look up we can see some more of these brown desert varnish plates sometimes they follow the beds and the bedding uh, and sometimes they're more on fracture faces and and surfaces so uh we'll see you on the next pitch thumbs up from darren he's in charge so yeah, hope you're enjoying just doing a fun little multi-pitch climb here at Red Rock. So we've worked our way up to, I think we're at the top of uh, pitch four. We came up to this little little nook with the tree. Um, and now Darren has led this pitch above us here. And he's just on top of this pillar right there. And then we have this overhanging crack right here that will be the next pitch so he's going to build an anchor <clears throat> right about here and bring me up to where he is and then i'll lead that pitch through that kind of crazy overhanging crack uh, and then i think one more pitch after that and we should be to the top um geologically more of the same just this really uh, impressive white sandstone with the dark desert varnish on it um, pretty awesome so we'll see you at the top of the next pitch take care so i've worked my way up to pitch five uh, i'm up here on lead but the, the little iron concretions actually stick out of the wall uh, all over this one little section it's just pretty amazing um, and so even in places we can actually tie them off with a sling and use it to protect the climb as we go up so hopefully you can see all those sticking out on the wall right there pretty neat section I don't know if I've seen anything quite like this where they the iron concretions are so eroded out of the rock pretty cool um, but onward, I got to head up this crack here and then we'll be to the summit pretty soon. Got it. Okay, we are at the top of our climb. We made it all the way up uh, from the bottom there. I think we did five or six pitches to get to the top of this climb called group therapy. Uh, we're up at the tippy top there. Darren's packing up the rope. Um, allows us to have a great view uh, from Red Rocks out towards Las Vegas. The red and white rocks out here, these are the Calico Hills, part of the same unit, the Aztec Sandstone. Uh, and then as we swing around to the north, we can see some of the limestone, the Cambrian Age limestone that forms the higher terrain here. In another video, I'll uh, explain 
some of the cool relationships between these two rocks and the big structural feature that exists here. So we'll head back down to the parking lot. Um, there's a gully descent down over here amongst all the boulders. Uh, great view of just the Red Rock Escarpment here looking to the, to the south. And then last little cool piece of geology here right behind Darren, we've got some nice cross beds. So you can see the main bedding planes are more or less horizontal. And then these steeper planes that are dipping to the left or to the north are the cross beds. Those are the backside or the slip face of these sand dunes that existed here during the Jurassic. So as the sand would kind of cascade down the backside of the dune, uh, those bedding planes were preserved as the dune migrated over the top of it. So hope you enjoyed coming aboard this little adventure, our little rock climbing trip here on the Aztec sandstone, looking at some of the cool features we saw as we came up this rock climb today and have a great one appreciate all the support you can provide there's a donate button on the top of the banner of the home page there's a thanks button below the video screen to the right uh, and under each video description there's other links that you can go to uh, if you want to donate and support the videos i'm making for you but until next time have a great one from red rock canyon in southern nevada